In this video, I'm going to go over how I made a custom G.I. Joe CoverGirl figure. This is my first custom figure, so I'll be making some mistakes and doing things wrong, but maybe that'll give one of you the inspiration to try to make your own custom. So I have a Wolverine tank, but no driver. That's why I need a CoverGirl figure. But before I started, I needed to figure out how I wanted her to look. She's depicted in different ways in the comics and the cartoons. Sometimes she's blonde, sometimes she's a redhead, sometimes she has reddish hair. She also has different outfits. I ended up deciding to make her blonde so that she'd stand out from Scarlet, because Scarlet's look is just so iconic. I made a sketch of her in a brown leather jacket similar to the original figure, but I went with more army green pants and brown boots. I just thought that felt more military in nature. CoverGirl got her code name because she's a model, but none of the previous releases looked very attractive, so I just took cues from their uniforms. I looked to other CoverGirl customs to get inspiration for her face and hair and other details. One trick I read about a few times was using the jacket from an Indiana Jones figure as CoverGirl's leather jacket. For her body and face, I went to the amazing Marauders website. They sell all kinds of parts for making custom figures. So I got in my Indiana Jones figure from eBay and I got some parts from Marauders and decided to just go at it. The first thing I did was um, heat up the figures. So you can see me here taking apart the Indiana Jones figure. What I did was I took a, um, like a cup full of water and just heated it up in the microwave to where it's like almost boiling and then just let the figure sit in there for, you know, like a minute or so. And then just started peeling, um, popping them apart. What's neat is the, um, the rubber, the plastic, gets really soft. So you can pop all the joints apart really easily without breaking them. Now, that worked great on the Indiana Jones figure. But you can see here I'm trying to take the arms out of the Marauder figure. And I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of pulling and pulling. And they snapped off. And they're broken. So, I don't know what happened with them. I guess you got to do something different to take those off. But, I didn't want to give up. I was kind of, you know, upset that they broke off. But, I figured, well, maybe I could, like, drill holes where um, the arms had been. And then I could push in the, you know, the Indiana Jones arms. So, that's what you see me trying to do here. I'm trying to, you know, wedge that, that Indiana Jones peg into the, the body that I got from Marauders but it's just not going in. So I'm taking my drill bits and I'm slowly making them bigger and bigger drill bits because, you know, you can always like go bigger, but if you go too big, you can't go back. So, you know, I'm just slowly trying a bigger and bigger drill bit. And here I <laughs> just like, I grab a hammer and I'm like, yeah, I'll just like hammer it in, which this is probably a really bad idea, but I was kind of getting frustrated like, what's going on because I kept heating these up you know softening the plastic and what I think it is is the Marauders um, the torso is made of a really hard kind of rigid plastic so I don't think it gives because even though I'm like drilling the holes bigger and bigger the um, the Indiana Jones arm like never really pops in and when it finally does it looks like the two halves separate you might have noticed it there it looks like the back and the front um, have separated but in the end, it looked really awesome. I was really psyched. I got the arms on and, you know, I got the jacket part is like a separate sort of plastic thing that just fits over the, the, um, the torso. So I was pretty excited. You can see the skin color on her hands is way off, but I was still excited. I mean, I was making my first custom. Some of the tools I use, like the gripper things, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? magnifying glass thing and pliers and cutters and then I'm using paints I'm using acrylics everybody seems to use acrylics and that's you know I have an acrylic set from doing miniatures and things like that so acrylics are nice because you can wash them with water you don't need any kind of weird like um, turpentine or anything like that to clean your brushes um, and this is like my workspace it's just a table with all my stuff on it so when I start painting I always I've started using like a dish years ago I started using this because the porcelain will just be good for like, you know, acting as a palette to put the paint on. And it's really easy to clean off. And it's just a nice, nice surface, like nice and flat. And you don't have to worry about dripping paint or splattering paint on it. Um, you know, nothing really sticks to the porcelain. And so what I'm doing here is just 
The only thing I really had to paint was her hair. So I'm just trying to, you know, make sure like not to get it on her face, not to get it on her skin and, you know, just slowly work, work around. One thing um, that I do know from painting in the past is like, don't try to do it all in one coat if you don't have to, because her hair is, because I'm doing yellow or blonde, which is a really light color, um, you want to build it up in, in layers. Now what I'm doing here is painting the um, the hands. If you saw the um, the Indiana Jones figure had a very yellowish kind of skin, um, where this is um, the Marauders figure has a ruddy or reddish kind of skin. So I'm just trying to match that on the hands so they match the face and don't look really weird. And luckily the skin tone was like perfect; it matched really good. I'm just pushing the hand next to the face in the light so I can see you know how well they match up. You might also notice I have the Marauder's head on the Indiana Jones body. I'm doing that so if I like mess up and get any paint on the shirt, I don't care. Because that body I'm just going to throw away really. So, you know, it's, it's neat that the, um, the necks and the heads, I guess things are pretty standard with these modern figures, which is kind of cool. Um, here I'm just cleaning off, off the brush. Uh, one of my art teachers taught me that years ago. Like you kind of run your brush between your thumb and your... Um, like the fatty part of your finger and you know you just want to make sure that after you wash your brush you always straighten it and let it dry like really straight otherwise you can ruin a good brush now here i'm trying to put that um emblem it's like a wolf or something onto her jacket and i just like totally messed it up and it looked really bad so what i'm doing is just wiping it off what's cool about acrylics is you know, just take water and a paper towel and you can just keep at it and um and wipe that off so here's some shots of the final figure i'm really excited how she came out i think she looks like really attractive looks like you know she could be a model cover girl um the marauders um figure like the body looks really good i like the proportions she looks tough but you know still feminine and attractive like like again like she could be a model i like the shorter hair because i just think it's more functional I think, um, you know, the longer hair kind of looks nice, but doesn't feel functional, you know, in a military kind of setting. And she looks great in the tank. Even though she's a modern figure, she fits into the Wolverine really well. And whoever thought of the idea of using the Indiana Jones figures jacket for cover girls, that was a great idea. It saved me so much time. I mean, I guess I could have sculpted it or you know, use super sculpty or something like that, but it never would have looked as good. And I learned a lot taking apart different figures and breaking figures and you know figuring out ways to fix that i hope this was useful to somebody maybe it'll inspire somebody to you know take their first dive into customizing a figure the way it did for me so you know maybe there's a couple things couple takeaways and i definitely hope to do more custom characters in the future